Okay, welcome back to another video on the math channel. So it's Yatisha Muslim here. In this video, we're going to be looking at Pythagoras' theorem. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to review the use of Pythagoras' theorem to solve problems involving right angled triangles. So what is Pythagoras' theorem? Pythagoras' theorem is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, where c is the hypotenuse. Okay. So basically what we're saying is it's the sum of the square of the two shorter sides of a right angle triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, the longer side in a right angle triangle. Now, if you're not given a diagram in a word of problem, please draw one, as that will help you solve the questions a lot easier. So let's have a look at some examples. Question one says, a rectangular board is to be cut along one of its diagonals. The board is one meter wide, and three meters high. What will be the length of the cut correct to the nearest centimeter? So I'm going to call this x because that's what we're trying to work out. And we know this is a right angle triangle here. And so we can say x squared is equal to one squared plus three squared. Okay, because these are the two shorter sides so we're going to add to work out the hypotenuse, which is equal to 10. So x is equal to the square root of 10, which is about, so that's approximately equal to 3.16 meters. Now this is correct to the nearest centimeter. This is technically correct to the nearest centimeter because um, there are 100 centimeters in a meter. So 100 has two zeros, so technically rounding to two decimal places. If you want to, you can write 316 centimeters, but I'm just going to leave it. Right, question two. The size of a TV screen is determined by its diagonal length. Find the size of a TV screen that is 1.2 meters wide and 70 centimeters high, round to the nearest centimeter. So I'm not given a diagram here, so I'm going to draw my TV. I know it's 70 centimeters high, and it's 1.2 meters wide. Now, because the question says around to the nearest centimeter, I might just convert this into centimeters. So 1.2, I'm going to times that by 100 to give me 120 centimeters. And now I can work out the length of this diameter. I'll just call it x. So x squared is equal to 70 squared plus 120 squared. Let's see what that is equal to. 19,300. So x is equal to the square root of 19,300, which is approximately equal to 138.92. Now, because this is already in centimeters, right, centimeters, we're going to round to the nearest centimeter, which will be 139. All right, let's have a look at question three. Here is a diagram showing the path of a bushwalker from camp one to camp two. Find the total distance walked correct to one decimal place. So here we need to work out this distance because the bushwalker walked three kilometers east and then down here, okay, southeast. So we need to work out that distance. I'm going to use this right angle triangle to work out what that distance is. So x squared is equal to, because that's a hypotenuse, we're going to have addition, 2 squared plus 1.5 squared. Which is 6.25. So x is equal to the square root of 6.25, which is 2.5 kilometers. All right, so now that we've worked that out, we can now answer the question. Find a total distance walked. Therefore, total distance walked is three plus the 2.5, which is 5.5 kilometers. All right. 
question four and five. Maybe pause the video, have a go with question four and question five as well. All right, question four. A 20 centimeter straw sits in a cylindrical glass as shown. What length of straw sticks above the top of the glass? So, in order for us to work this out, we know the length of the entire straw is 20. We want to work out how much sticks out, which technically means that we need to know this distance. Because then we can just do 20 minus that and will now give us the amount that's sticking out. So here's my right angle triangle. Okay. If this radius is four, the whole base of the triangle is eight. And so now I can call this X. X squared is equal to 14 squared plus eight squared. Which is 260. So X is equal to the square root of 260 which is approximately equal to 16.12. Alright, so if x is that, we can now work out the length of the straw that sticks above the top of the glass. Therefore, length of straw sticking above the glass is equal to 20 minus the 16.12, which is 3.88 centimeters. All right, question five, find the perimeter. All right, so in order for us to work out the perimeter, we need to know this length, this length, and this. Now, because I already know that the base is four, what I really need is any one of these sides because they're both equal. So I'm gonna work this one out. And I'm gonna use this right angle triangle here. Now, I know this is seven because that's what it says here, but this bit here, the base of the triangle is actually two, it's half the four. So I'm going to call this x again. x squared is equal to 7 squared plus 2 squared. 49 plus 4 is 53. So x is equal to the square root of 53. So now we can work out the perimeter. The perimeter is 2 lots of root 53 plus the 4. So two times root 53 plus four is 18.56. So 18.56 centimeters, and that's to two decimal places. For question B, we can see here that A, the unknown side is actually not the hypotenuse. So we're gonna be using subtraction. So A squared is gonna to equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other shorter side squared, which is equal to 256. So A is equal to the square root of 256. So now we can say therefore the perimeter is equal to root 256 plus 30 plus 34. Because remember, the perimeter is the total distance around the outside. So that's root 256 plus 30 plus 34. That'll give us the perimeter of this triangle. So the square root of 256 plus 30 and 34 is 80. I'm just going to write U for units. All right, question six and seven. Why don't you pause the video and have a go with these two questions? Okay, question six. A yacht's mast is supported by a 12 meter cable attached to its top. On the deck of the yacht, the cable is eight meters from the base of the mast. How tall is the mast? Round your answer to two decimal places. 
So here we are not given a diagram, so I'm going to just draw one. I know it's a right angle triangle. The question is how tall is the mast? I don't know what it is, so I'm going to call that H for the height. We know that the cable is 12 meters, so this is 12 meters because that's the cable. And on the deck of the yacht, the cable is 8 meters from the base of the mast, so this is 8 meters. So how tall is the mast? So we've got height squared is equal to, now H, the unknown, is not the hypotenuse. Okay, 12 is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. Therefore, we're using subtraction. Hypotenuse squared minus eight squared. Well, 12 squared minus eight squared is 80. So the height is equal to the square root of 80, which is approximately equal to 8.94. The question says to round it to two decimal places. So 8.94 meters to two decimal places. Okay, question seven. A 14 centimeter straw just fits into a can as shown. The diameter of the can is seven centimeters. Find the height of the can correct to two decimal places. So here we want to work out the height. And again, the height is not the hypotenuse. So we're gonna use subtraction. So height squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus the other shorter size squared, which is 147. So the height is equal to the square root of 147, which is approximately equal to 12.12 centimeters. All right, question eight and nine. Why don't you pause the video and have a go with these two questions? All right, question eight. Find the length of AB in this diagram. Leave your answer in exact form. So we want to find that. The thing is, we don't have enough information to work that out at the moment. We only have one other known side, but we don't have the other one. So we need this one. In order to work this one out here, which I will call x, we're going to use these two values for the right angle triangle. Now x is not the hypotenuse, so we're going to use subtraction. x squared is equal to 25 squared minus 24 squared. What's that equal to? 49, so x is equal to the square root of 49, which is 7. All right, so now that I know that 7, we can work out AB. AB squared is equal to, because we're using a right angle triangle, so we need to use Pythagoras' theorem. Now AB is not a hypotenuse, so again, we're going to use subtraction. So 11 squared minus 7 squared. Okay, always take the hypotenuse and square and then minus the shorter side squared. 72. So AB is equal to the square root of 72. Now that's not, yes, that's an exact form, but it's not in simplest form. Um, I don't think you really need to simplify it because we're not testing your ability to simplify. But if we were to simplify it, what two numbers multiply to 72, where one of them is a square number? Well, I can divide it by 36. I can square root 36. So technically 72, root 72, is equal to the square root of 36 times the square root of two. Okay, because 36 times two is 72. The square root of 36 is six, so technically it's equal to six root two. Okay, six root 2. All right, question 9. Find the value of x corrected to two decimal places. So here 
we can use Pythagoras' theorem again. x squared plus x squared is equal to phi squared, all right? Shorter size squared plus shorter size squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. We know 5 is the hypotenuse because it's opposite the right angle. So x squared plus x squared, that's just 2x squared, is equal to 25. Divide both sides by 2, 12.5. So x is equal to the square root of 12.5. which is 3.54. Okay, it's approximately equal to 3.54 to two decimal places. All right, let's have a look at some exam style questions. Pause the video and have a go with these two. Okay, question one says, A, B, C, D is a trapezium. Work out the length of B, C. So BC is here. We want to know what that length is. Well, if I were to draw a line that's parallel to that over here, they are going to be exactly the same length. Okay, they're going to be the same length. So now that I've done that, technically I've got a right angle triangle here. Let me just highlight that for you. Here is our right angle triangle. We know that the hypotenuse is 10. This is what we're trying to work out. This one here, we need to work that one out as well. Well, if we know that this entire length is nine centimeters, because that's what it says, but this bit here is three, this bit here is three, this bit up here has to be six. Okay, and so now we can work this out. I'm just gonna call this BC because it's the same length as BC. So BC squared is equal to, now is BC a hypotenuse? No, nope, it's the shorter side. So I'm gonna use subtraction. Hypotenuse squared minus shorter side squared. 10 squared minus six squared is 64. So BC is equal to the square root of 64 or eight centimeters. Question two, work out the exact value of W. Now W here is a hypotenuse, so we're gonna use addition. W squared is equal to half squared plus two thirds squared. So we got half squared plus two thirds squared is 25 and 36. So W is equal to the square root of 25 and 36, which will equal to five on six, because the square root of 25 is five, the square root of 36 is six. Or if you want to, you can just do it in your calculator, five on six. All right, question three and four. Pause the video and have a go with these two. All right, question three. Work out the length of PQ. So here we've got uh, Q is one six, P is nine two. So that will help us work out um, these lengths here. All right. So let's look at the bottom one first. All right, from here to here. We know that this is one six, so I'm just gonna write that one and six. This one here has a x value of nine and a y value of two. Okay. And so now that will help us know, okay, well this base here has to be eight, eight units long from one to nine, that's eight. The height of the triangle from two to six is four. So therefore PQ, which is the hypotenuse, we're going to use addition. PQ squared is equal to 4 squared plus 8 squared. Which is 80. So PQ is equal to the square root of 80. And that's an exact form. 
All right, if we wanted to do this to two decimal places, it's about 8.94. And I just write U there for units. Question four, to find the value of X. So X here is an angle, all right? So we can't work this out yet because we don't have enough information. We only have one side. So we need to work out what BD is. So I'm gonna use this right angle triangle. And we can see here that BD is actually the hypotenuse of triangle ABD. So BD squared is equal to 6 squared plus 8 squared. We use addition because BD is the hypotenuse. So 6 squared plus 8 squared is 100. So BD is equal to the square root of 100, which is 10. So we know this is 10. Well, we can see here that if this is 10, and this is 10, then technically this here is a right, uh, sorry, is a right angled isosceles triangle. So that X here is actually the same as this X, or this angle here. This angle here is also X. So they're technically the same. So we've got 90 degrees plus 2X is equal to 180. X has to equal to 45 degrees. Another way of doing this is just to use um, trig. Okay, we know that this is opposite the x and this is adjacent to the x. So we can say tan of x is equal to opposite over adjacent. So x, the angle, is equal to the inverse tan of 1. So we can put that in our calculators. Whenever we work out an angle, we have to press shift. So shift tan of 1 is equal to 45. So x is equal to 45 degrees. All right, let's have a look at the last question, which is a HSE question. 2010, general maths question 3. A field diagram has been drawn from an offset survey. What is the distance from g to h correct to the nearest meter? So g to h. Mm, that's this. Okay, so we need to work that out. Now, in order for us to do that, it will probably be helpful to draw in, to create a right angle triangle using this. So I'm going to create a right angle triangle by drawing this line here. Okay, so that's my right angle triangle. So I know that this line that I just drew is 12 because this is 12. Okay, so they're the same length. The thing is, I need to work out this shorter side over here. Well, if this whole, if this whole length, this whole line here is 16, but this is 11, that means that this is 11 as well. Therefore, this shorter side has to be five. Okay, so now we can answer this, GH is the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. So I'm going to use addition. 5 squared plus 12 squared. One six nine. So GH is equal to the square root of 169, which is equal to 13. Okay, just to double check equal to 13. So the answer is B. So that's it for this video. Okay, so let's just review what we've looked at. We've reviewed Pythagoras' theorem, which is C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, where C is the hypotenuse. So if we're trying to work out the hypotenuse, we use addition. If we're trying to work out a shorter side, we use subtraction. Okay, so we replace the plus with a minus sign instead. Make sure it's always the hypotenuse squared minus the shorter side squared, otherwise you're gonna get a negative answer. All right, another important thing that we discussed was if a question doesn't have a diagram, draw a diagram because then that will help you know what you need to do. 
Also, we looked at other questions where um, the measurements were in different units. So make sure that the measurements are in the same units before you actually use Pythagoras' theorem. And always double check your, your answer by rereading the question. After you've answered the question, read the question again. Always ask yourself, have I answered the question? So for example, here in question three, you might have worked out x is equal to 2.5, but that's not the final answer because we haven't answered the question. So read the question again, find the total distance walked, and answer it. Okay, so if you found this video helpful, please give it a like. Uh, if you still have any questions, just comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you would like more content, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. See you.